thought it was my fault. I thought that I didn't do everything that he needed. I thought it was my fault that I had done this to him. He was reading 22 words a minute. Um, he's read as many as the mid to upper 90s per minute now. When you've got a kid who in first grade has to sound out the word the every single time they see it, it's more than attention. His confidence has really come up. Um, I feel like he feels more confident um, if he does have to read in front of the class or anything. A month into the program, we brought him up here. Um, he stopped us and said, you know what, I, I really enjoy going, coming up here because these guys teach me the way I need to be taught. That right there, you know, just that, that little bit, that little phrase that he said, that meant the world to me, you know. We're getting him the right, the right intervention, we're getting him the right, the right teaching method, something that he needs. He loves coming here. I mean, we travel six hours a week with, between travel time and tutoring that he's doing outside of school, and he'd much rather come here. Sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a detriment as well because he can, read, he can read labels, you know, a lot better than he did than he used to. And, and uh, you know, he actually knows what's in some of these foods that we're, that we're trying to push on him, so. <laughs> I don't want to drink that vegetable juice. Come on, are you serious? You think, um, my kid's not going to have a future. They're going to end up in prison. They're not going to be able to do anything. They're going to drop out of school and boom, they're a criminal. <laughs> I know for me, it was a relief because I had stayed at home with Dash. I didn't stay at home with my older son. I thought it was my fault. I thought that I didn't do everything that he needed to be a good reader like my older son was. Because they went to the same preschool, everything. I thought it was my fault that I had done this to him. You know, working with the school district, um, with Dash's IEP, working with the teachers, um, we see that there needs to be more training inside the school district. You know, the teachers don't know what they don't know. You know, they, they, they have kind of inkling of dyslexia and what it is, um, but they don't really know truly what it is. They, I don't think that the teachers can see the full extent of the problem. Stop throwing these kids away. Stop letting them drop out of school because school isn't geared towards them. Stop throwing them away. They have value. They're smart. When you're looking at his future, you gotta have you gotta have this the reading skill to, to move on to do almost anything, right? Um, and it, it doesn't matter what the costs, you know, uh, what the cost is. You gotta get that skill. And I the only thing I wish is if we would have did this, known about it sooner. For money spent, the investment, that's that's nothing, you know, compared to what it's going to bring to them in the future. We have really good tutors between Dana and Rebecca. Um, Dash has worked with both of them a little bit and uh, fantastic. And I'm just so grateful for the support that uh, Northside has provided for us in doing this program. I know Dash has seen a huge benefit out of it and it's going to be, in, you know, even more so in the future, you know, as he goes forward. So thank you very much. We can express our gratitude enough in the safe, wonderful place that has been provided for Dash to come and learn the way he needs to be taught. You know, people go, where do we go? Go to Northside. <laughs>